Oh my god. Ah! Ah! Is it really that hard nowadays to piece together a at least passable or decent wrestling television show? Is it really that hard? Is it really that difficult? Good Christ. If you agree with me that AEW Dynamite this week was a steaming, steaming, heaping pile of grade A bullshit, smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. And if you think it was great and you want to rage against me, that's wonderful. That's encouraged too. Smash subscribe button, follow on Twitter, do it. This was garbage. Like you, you would even the the thing you would say about, oh, you can tell Marks wrote this show. Like I've seen Marks that fantasy book shit better than this. Like, as a Mark, I know what Marks look like. So do you, those who clicked on the video of a guy on YouTube talking about reviewing a wrestling show. Who are the Marks here? Everybody. But good Christ Almighty. What the hell is AEW trying to accomplish here? Who are they trying to get over? Who are they trying to feature as stars? Why does everybody want to do the same type of crap? Who makes the decisions to feature these people in these ridiculous, asinine, dumbass ways? Like your opening match. Because of course, because it's dynamite every week, we gotta open with a fucking tag match, it seems like. Hangman Page in the Dark Order versus TH2 in the Chaos Project. Because that's the last thing this show needs is more schmoz matches full of people that you don't give a crap about. And somebody gave Luther a live mic. Look, if the whole thing here is to use negative one as a prop, then don't even bother with the damn match. And furthermore, speaking of that, it's cool that this young man gets a chance to do this. It's cool and all this. But at what point in time do we start saying that this is getting kind of sad and kind of using him as a prop and it's kind of pathetic? Like, flame away at me in the comments if you want. But I'll be stationed here like, it's cool to use him every once in a while. No issue with that. But the way they're going to start doing this, are they going to keep doing this every single week? Like, yeah, come on. It almost seems like they're taking advantage of the kid at some point in time. It's just my opinion. But while it's cool when he sits there and tells the guys, you know, my birthday was three days ago, you idiots. Like, it's it's just... Are you, are you focused on negative one, Brody Lee Jr.? Or are you focused on Hangman Page and his decision on whether or not he's going to join the Dark Order? And after his team wins the match, Hangman Page, predictably, doesn't join the Dark Order. And I guess my question is, why should we care? It's dumb. Like, what does that accomplish? You follow that up, instead of putting this in the opening spot... Because why the hell would you do that? You got to start this Mark Run fucking indie fed with a damn match, a tag match with a bunch of spots or it's stupid crap that nobody gets over in. Instead, the second segment, who feature, which features a real star or a real icon in Sting, and you're using him to try and put over Darby Allen because, of course, you know he's going to be wrestling at the next pay per view. Yeah, you sense this coming, you can smell it coming. And Team Taz is challenged. Speaking of a team full of talent that ultimately kind of gets combined together as a schmoz because that's all we can do with this fucking company. It's a bunch of teams and factions. Who the hell stands out here? Team Taz talks about, you want to take it to the streets. Okay, so what? You're going to have a street fight? What do you do? Like, this is the way that you determine to use these guys? Like, this is Sting! Sting! And a character that you've done a good job of building up in Darby Allen. Like, this is the best you got. This is the best you could come up with. And when I think that utilization is stupid, I look at what they did to their freaking world champion this week. Look, I'm not big on Kenny Omega. I think he's overrated as shit. I think all of you that pumped him up for years when he was wrestling in New Japan got exposed for your markdom living in your Dave Meltzer-inspired bubbles. He's trash. As a world champion... For a major company? Please! But he is the world champion. So as a result, 
You would think you would go to great lengths to feature him like a star, to pretend and imagine that people should actually give a crap about their champion. But instead, no, primarily what we did this week was focus on the Young Bucks and their stupid ass, this should be on your YouTube being the elite channel show shit. And we put it instead on freaking cable network television. Like this seriously made fucking TV? They're showing up to Kenny Omega's house and Don Callis is there? Like, the whole shirtless picture with Kenny and Don Callis is obviously an attempt at humor. And maybe if this segment itself as a whole wasn't so cringy, that cringy element would stand out and actually be funny. But this is, to me is a perfect example of guys who have inside jokes that have somehow become really, really funny for them when they're really not that funny. And when you say them to anybody else, they look at it and say, well, that makes absolutely no fucking sense. Like, this is seriously made TV? This? This is how you're going to use your world champion? And later on, when you saw one-eyed Callus, you're sitting there wondering, oh, we could see who dressed Kenny Omega this week. Holy Christ! And even later on, what was he doing? Beating up Penta? Who cares? Like, what are we doing here? Like, you thought the invasion angle of 2001 was shit. At least then you had some spectacular moments and you had star power for days. This has none of it. This reeks of nerdy marks that don't know how to actually develop a story, trying to tell a story and failing spectacularly and miserably at it. This whole crossover between them and Impact has been one gigantic waste of time, which if AEW knows anything and they're starting to learn very, very well, very WWE skill, is how to waste everybody's fucking time from one week to the next. And then you look at one of the people as well, you know, it's bad enough what you're doing with your world champion, but Cody's the one that you try to pump up, like he's the second coming, and he sucks. He is average, middle of the road, blase, period. He always has been, he always will be. But nonetheless, they persist. He's one of the EVPs, it's whatever. He's not in the world title picture, so I can kind of live with that. I can't live with that crappy ass remix theme song that he has. Get rid of that crap. It's not as bad as the neck tattoo, but it's not exactly any damn good. Well, he's wrestling Peter Avalon here, and apparently he talked about on social media how he was going to end this match in a minute or less. And to me, the only challenge of one minute that I see is whether or not I would last a minute with Jade Cargill. And the answer is no. Absolutely not, and I don't care. You can judge me all you want. But why in the hell would you have her come out and interrupt at the very beginning and then go away? Just so that way Cody didn't win in a minute? This is fucking stupid. And then more dumb Mark match Mark bullshit. Sitting there struggling to beat the damn librarian. Struggling to beat an absolute job. Or struggling, struggling to beat the person that if you asked yourself, what would happen if Ruby Riot went to AEW and was a man? Out comes Peter Avalon. This. This is the guy that Cody Rhodes is struggling with. Who books this shit? Cody. I don't even like you. You are a piece of shit. But nonetheless, looking out for the greater good of AEW, this is not helping Peter Avalon. It's not helping you. It's not helping any damn body. Your company is in a place where it doesn't need to try and get everybody over, where they get absolutely nobody over. They need to be able to be in the business of identifying a few people that you want to build everything around. And you probably are one of them. As a result, you should be wasting your time like this with freaking Peter Avalon struggling to beat the librarian. If Ruby Riot had a penis, that's who you're struggling with. And then you look at Luchasaurus. His species, his ancestors, didn't spend 65 million years evolving to utilize them like this. Instead of looking at this big, tall son of a bitch in a dinosaur mask and saying, hey, you know what? We're going to make us a kin-friendly star that can move a shit ton of masks and merch. All they did instead was make him a backup singer for freaking Luke Perry's son who has no charisma and a freaking teenage girl. Excuse me, I'm being told that's Marco's son. Again, what the hell's the difference? Who should be the real AEW Women's Champion? It's Marco Stunt. And this whole backstage segment with FTR. Like FTR is sitting there and saying that they don't need any help. Like the one dude who gives a fuck at this point. They don't stand off enough to know their goddamn names. Is it Dash? Is it Wilder? Who gives a shit? 
but he's saying, I don't need these guys, I don't need Tully, I don't need the other Jagoff. And then Luchasaurus comes in and is talking about, well, I'm going to make sure that everybody's out there, I'm going to make sure nobody gets involved. Like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Again, who writes this shit? Why are you putting the Luchasaurus in this goddamn position? And then about halfway through the show, I feel like I'm getting this reprieve. It's Nick Comoroto. Who in the hell is this? It looks like a combination of Hercules and Bruiser Brody. Huff, huff, huff. You know, basically, Billy Jerk Haynes version two. And that's fantastic. Like, he instantly stood out. And I wasn't the only one that noticed on social media, believe me. And look at Mr. Freak Beast and they sit there and say, holy sweet Jesus, who the hell is this guy? AEW, you need people like this. You don't need your nerds that are flipping around, can't keep track of what's going on, no selling, doing all these ridiculously looking choreographed spots that make your a, a form of entertainment, excuse me, look even more fake than it already does. You got this dude who looks legit and looks badass, and you're jobbing him out to John Moxley. You can make the argument where you put him in this spot. And this is he's working with a former world champion of the company, so it's not all that bad. Yes, in theory, perhaps. But how awesome would it have been to accomplish multiple things here with one match by making Komarodo look like a freaking powerhouse, let John Moxley get his shit in, and then Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, the Good Brothers, somebody get involved, distract, interfere in something, and this freaking Hercules, Bruiser Brody, Billy Jerk Haynes, fucking melding together individual wins the damn match. Like, that's how you create somebody that people take notice of. That's how you create somebody that people get emotionally invested in. Regardless of if you package them as a babyface, a heel, a tweener, no character at all, doesn't matter. Like, look at that fucking dude. You take these people that should be standing out on their own. You take the powerhouse Will Hobbses and the Brian Cages of the world. You take a guy like Homoroto and you make them not stand out whatsoever. That's stupid. Like he was one of the most buzzworthy things on the show. And this is how you're going to utilize him? Back to dark with them! Because this company's run by Mark Morons. And think about it this way. Imagine having Jake the Snake Roberts, one of the greatest psychologists, one of the greatest talkers in the history of the business, and Eddie Kingston, one of the better, more engaging talkers that we have in the business today. One of those people that when you talk about wrestling, that spot looks fake, that's stupid, I didn't come to watch gymnast gymnastics or karate or taekwondo, but Eddie Kingston is fucking legit. He's real. I believe that he's just crazy enough to do some shit. And that's perfect. We get so few people that actually get us to buy into their character. We get so few people now in wrestling that you suspend your disbelief because you don't know because he's always feel like he's towing the line. I love Eddie Kingston. Stop putting him in these situations. This whole backstage interaction between him and Archer and Jake the Snake. Again, you've got Jake the Snake and Eddie Kingston. And that's the abortion of a segment that you write for them? You suck. Not as bad as a six-man tag, though. Fuck. Top Flight and Matt Seidel. Remember a while back, people were flipping out about Top Flight and how much potential they had? Why? Well, we know why. Because they can flip. Everybody can flip. Who gives a shit? Like, do wrestling fans, do the hardcore fans have zero standards anymore? Do you take this crap so seriously when it comes to the moves that that's all that matters? Or are you that easily entertained like a seven-year-old? Like, look at this tag match. You got top flight private party. They're all Matt Seidel. They're all flippy fucking around. And you get to the point, I think it was Top Flight, where you're doing too much shit, you can't even remember who's the legal man or where the hell you're at or what's going on. Then you need to <clears throat> slow the hell down. Stop. It's a tragedy. Because a lot of these kids, these young men, these ladies, can do some really incredible, spectacular things. But they overdo them to death. Like you can hear the flummox and frustration in JR's voice. He's like, oh, what the hell does it even matter? Exactly, JR. And you're right. That's the problem. You can bump and flip fuck around all day, but if the people don't care, what the hell are you doing? 
Like, it's cool. Private party turns heel. All right. Like it's kind of out of nowhere. You've been building towards it for a little bit. But at least they went with the private parties fully embracing it as opposed to Matt Hardy forcing them down that path. I like that, but who the fuck cares? Did you know they're not going to follow up with this? They've only got 300 bazillion goddamn tag teams as it is. Remember when the Young Bucks are the champs? Are they even the champs? Do they even feature the Young Bucks as champs? No, because they're one of the EVP nerds. Both of them. Fucking Bucks of suck. But even then, they're the champs. They should be featured like the champs and what they're doing. Pathetically walk, walking around looking for Kenny Omega. Doesn't make them look good at all. Stupid. And weren't they supposed to be healed, but then they're faced, but then they're healed, and then they're faced? That's some big show Ross Perot crap. I quit. I'm back. I quit. I'm back. I quit. I'm back. I'm healing face. I'm healing face. I'm healing face. What the hell am I doing? I'm face. I'm healing face. I'm healed. Jesus. Penelope Ford versus Layla Hirsch. Who asked for this match? It's like every week you get this rotation into this before the main event spot where the ladies get like four or five minutes. It's two ladies that you don't have any character development in. It's two ladies that you don't give a shit about that are involved in things that you either don't know about, there is nothing you're involved in, or you don't care about it. And of all the women you're going to feature, you got another week where you don't feature your AEW Women's Champion. Again, I'm going to ask, if you consistently find reasons to not have your AEW Women's Champion, bitch, AEW Women's Champion. And that means you have to wrestle every week. But who, who's the alpha? Why would anybody ever care about the women's champion of this stupid company if she's never bothered to be finding it important enough to be on frickin' TV to begin with? And then why bother with this match when it's just about the whole thing with Chuck, excuse me, Chuck being with the best man and sitting there saying to Orange Cassidy that Miro is his best friend now? Like, that's stupid. Like, who wants to see this? Who wants to see Orange Cassidy used like this? Who wants to see frickin' Nero used like this? Match, match marks. Dumb idiots that don't know how to put together weekly television. That's who does this shit. And oh boy, by the way, as if we don't have enough of a clusterfuck, you know, why do you have a rating system or rankings or anything like that if you're just going to do this? Apparently we're getting a women's number one contenders tournament. So you're going to have what? 16 women that you don't care about? 16 women that they haven't featured well? 16 women that this company's treated like absolute crap? All competing to become the number one contender? So that way they can still be continued to be treated like crap whether they end up winning the title or not? Their way to solve the problem with the women's division is to do more meaningless matches and throw some type of stipulation against it and hope it sticks. Again, some more match move mark bullshit. It makes me so mad because by the time he got to the eight main event, I was cooked. I was done with this show. Like they even got Sammy Hagar to do a quick promo spot. That's cool. Like that should have been hyped up and made a really big effing deal. And instead it happens and then we're right on into the Inner Circle's main event. And I, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to be way more negative on this main event than I need to be or should be because it's the vortex of suck that was the abortion that was the rest of Dynamite this week. That took its toll at this point in time, I can't lie. But thank God NBA Twitter wasn't watching Chris Jericho last night. Because holy shit, they would have eaten his ass alive. Or some, some of them might say that Jericho would eat them alive now. But you get my drift. The botch code breaker, the dangerous ass noggin salt. Like, look, I can't do a lion salt and I'm almost 40. That dude's 50 doing a lion salt. But there, there comes a point in time that if you cannot safely execute the move, then it is time to do something different. Nobody wants to sit there and see you get paralyzed in the ring. But frankly, that might be unfortunately what it takes. If somebody's going to have to get really seriously hurt for them to slow down and evaluate what the hell they're doing and saying, hey, gee, we might need to learn how to do this the right way. Hey, gee, we should pick and choose our spots and not burn through our bump card by the time we're 32. MJF and Jericho win in this kind of triple threat tag match. To sit there and determine who's going to be the tag team that represents Inner Circle that goes on to wrestle for the titles. Cool. Like, this is the one thing that got really hurt by the rest of this show. You have character development. You have story. You have different twists and turns of where this could potentially go. This has been built up to. 
It doesn't normally feel like the same type of match. There's actually some story told within the match. You know, until you get to the botched ass noggin salt. Damn near killed himself. But, like, this is the one thing I should be looking to forward to every week because the rest of this show is hot garbage. But by the time you get through the rest of the hot garbage to get to this, it's even tainted it. I realize not all of us are going to have the same opinions when it comes to professional wrestling. And that's cool. We should not. It's way more fun when we don't. But we should be able to come to some types of consensus on certain things. Usually every week now, Raw absolutely sucks. It's not the popular or cool thing to say. It's not trying to be different or funny. Like pretty much everybody agrees now, Raw sucks. Right? AEW has some really good shows. Some of their pay-per-views have been very good. Some of their Dynamite episodes have been good. Some of them have been great. Some of them have been, eh, you can't win them all. But then you get episodes like this. Like, what the hell was it? Was it the leadership of the company was too distracted by the Biden inauguration to give a crap or pay attention to what the hell they were putting together on paper for this effing show? Like, disrespectful to expect people to sit through two hours of this. And I'm sorry, if you're going to sit there and defend this, you show just how much of a bleeding heart sheep mark you are for this company. It does not make you a bad fan to admit when a show is bad. To me, it makes you kind of a simplistic fan to sit there and be tricked by every single stupid flip or kick that you see the same in the first match and the last match and every fucking match in between. What the hell happened to people's standards? What the hell happened to trying to actually make some stars? What the hell happened to people trying to be different? Trying to be unique? Be characters, personalities, storytellers, entertainers. Flipping around like you're in a gymnastics fucking meet, is not entertaining. If you want to see that, go watch gymnastics. Because at least there, they execute. At least there, they make it look real. Because it is real. Here, it just looks stupid and fake as hell. So you can feel free to tell me how much you hated this show this week or label and identify yourself as a raging mark by defending it to kingdom come. If you sat there and you're kind of in the middle and you're like, eh, it's okay, it wasn't that bad. Like, maybe you're the worst of all or maybe you're the voice of reason that we need. But this show sucked. And you should go publicly shame anyone that tried to tell you that Dynamite this week was any damn good at all. It was horrible.